Welcome to Roleplay Cafe. We're here again for, I believe, what is this, session 12, I think, of Alien, the RPG, yeah, with uh, the GM, John, Dune, myself, Dale, and Todd. And uh, turn it away directly to, to John. Get us uh, on track. All right. So uh, last time, the crew of the Solvetsky Island uh, was investigating both the uh, the mutiny that is taking place on the mother colony, uh, which is led by uh, General Norlin Ozolinsky. Okay. And he is uh, the mil- he is the uh, the chief military officer of the uh, mother colony, and is a high-ranking general in the United Progressive Peoples Organization, which is a member of the mother colony, and uh, he has essentially started this this mutiny and and seemingly an attempt to take control of the mother colony but is trapped in, or, or not really trapped, but kind of pinned down in a particular section of the uh, the ground level, uh, basically the entire eastern part of the ground level. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the main issue is that he has uh, control of the main sources of food and entertainment, and also the main exit out of the mother colony onto the planet. Uh, the crew decided that uh, they're going to leave this to the expertise of the governor and the police force on here. They have significantly more men than the general. Um, and um, they have the situation relatively contained. So the crew is going to press on and work on the one of the next colonies they need to investigate. Uh, but before we do that, we have to establish exactly what is in, going to go into the report of the Gorham colony. Um, so they're expected to deliver a report both, both on the status and viability of reestablishing the colony for uh, to gather more resources for the mother. Um, so, as I've mentioned before, um, you did get a uh, a catalog of uh, basically all the major events that took place on the Gorham Colony. Uh, no one has said that they sat down and reviewed it. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to do that, we can establish uh, some of the information you gathered from the report that was given to you by um, uh, Emilio Moreno. And uh, or if you want to deal with that later, you can. And you can just, you know, put whatever you feel is significant in the report. Okay. Yoko has no... uh opinion on keeping anything any information from our entire expedition secret from the governor okay um, just you know I, I i yoko has no reason to be less than forthcoming about all information yeah i i i i can't see a reason why i want to keep all this secret i mean you know i don't i doesn't look like we want people to go back and uh, recolonize colonize that place, right? Uh, I don't. Uh, I mean, I feel like that's not uh, that's not a decision I'm capable of making. I feel like I, it, I'm not you know, an administrator. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. You know, right? Uh, yeah. So I leave that to the people that are uh, you know paid uh, the, that 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 uh, that that. Uh, that the uh, that the uh, pay field, you know, like it's above I mean, my uh, pay grade. Huh? They seem to have a decent thing going, just not enough people. Well, I don't know. I don't. I mean, 
Yeah. I mean, no way two, like, seven people could run that whole facility, but, you know, again, no. get enough of us down there, no reason we couldn't uh, salvage it. You think, Gag? All right. Well. I don't know. It's not, again, it's not our not our job. Thank goodness we don't have made a decision. Hey, just tell them, just tell it like it is, what we saw, what we encountered, you know, and they can make that decision. Yeah, I think that's pertinent for us to do that. I've been an open door with all the medical information. So, yeah. I mean, they need to know what's affecting them. And I'll even express my concern that maybe that there's some kind of thread of connection between all the other colonies not... Um, not responding. Not responding. And, and the fact is, and then even let them know we get the tools to, to detect... You know what I mean? And, and we need to be sent out there to make sure that it's not going to spread to the main colony. That'd be what I'm pushing for. To try to get yeah. some more, you, you know what I mean, aid, as it were. Yeah. Get us back out there as quick as possible. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're, I don't think we're hiding anything about the alien or the infection or the thing. Um, is that correct, Crew? I, I, that's what I think, yeah. Um, are we hiding anything? I can do the thing with it. Okay, so are we hiding anything about the black box? Are we hiding anything about the black box? Well, why would... And the tam potential tampering with our food and the... Potent and the <sighs> we actually have video of, of in, in, you know intruders on board. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean, uh, all that needs to be, I think, shown because it could be tampered with the. Okay, so I can spend some time to like um, just organize the what we what I have, what footage we have, and then label it properly okay. and submit it in the file in the report. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um... So you, it sounds like you're going to be you're going to be fairly honest. You're going to give as much information as you find uh, you, you feel the administration needs to make the decision as to whether or not they're going to recolonize Gorum. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, you're going to provide all the data of the you know the uh, the people that breached your ship. And potentially cat contaminated everything and all the results. Dr. Birch already turned over all the samples he had. So it sounds like you're going to be pretty open about it. Mm -hmm. I have one more all right. idea yeah. or one more thing that I think needs to a decision needs to be made on. Um, what does the crew do with Emily? Who oh, right. had who had um kind of underhandedly tried to put uh, this, the alien creature in a suitcase or a briefcase and take it home. Yeah. Uh, she was, uh, go ahead. She was caught, you know, she was caught after you guys searched the ship and found, you know, she had taken that snake, you know, the carcass of that snake and was probably going to try to sell it to somebody as to what I gathered. Um, yeah. One thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, she is your prospector, and if you're going to go to this uncharted location, uh, the, the, the potential, uh, you know, the potential new colony, uh, which is codenamed Aljana, or Aljana, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, uh, you probably want her with you, <laughs> with her skill set, so... Yeah, we could reprimand her as a crew and tell her, you know, give her a strike, but keep her on. Just keep that within our, you know, what I would say. I think, I think Yoko would try to reassure her that, like, us, the crew, and, like, uh, um, that we are, uh, we're, we're like a family, Yoko would say. And that, um, you know, we don't keep secrets from each other, but, you know, Yoko, basically, he's going to forgive and support. Forget. 
Don't forget. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't forget. <laughs> Okay, so we basically will want Emily to stay on the crew. That's just to be uh, to check with. Uh, I think uh, you, you keep her close. You know, because uh, we're not sure what her loyalties are. So I'd uh, say either boot her off the ship or keep her really close to us. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know where her loyalties are. Her loyalties are to herself and to money, but. We have to work together, and, you know, I believe there's good in everyone, is what Yoko would say. And uh, Windows, behind his sunglasses, behind his goggles, is rolling his eyes at that. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> All right, cut to us on board with, with everyone together. <laughs> Best friends. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so our report is pretty thorough. All right, it sounds like it. All right. All right. So you're going to uh, turn over that report to the governor. Um, he's obviously, you know, preoccupied uh, when when all of you arrive to to turn it in. Uh, but she thanks you, and uh, she says. Um, Due to the incidents that uh, have been reported about missing equipment and uh, the the need to transfer uh, vac suits from one ship to another, uh, we are going to station a working Joe units on every expeditionary vehicle. You are going to be assigned Two, which will be available to you for performing tasks, which uh, would normally take normally need to be done while everyone is in cryo sleep. Uh, you can speak with engineering to uh, receive your two. I believe their code names are James and Miss Sophie. Have you? Come to any conclusions as to what your next target is going to be. Mm. Right. Okay. So, what's our choices here? With will, 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 will it be required that we uh, travel in in cryo? Uh, I didn't. Yeah. On the previous ride over, I or on the ride to Gorum, on the trip to Gorum, I. Was able. I had the luxury of uh, staying out of cryo the entire trip. I will leave that to your discretion. Just remember to you need to manage your resources appropriately. We don't want to lose uh, lose anyone due to lack of food or water As or usual. oxygen, for that matter. <laughs> All right. Losing someone to oxygen. How absurd! <laughs> All um, right. So do do so. Is that the two choices we have right here? There's more than that. We've got Dylan Colony uh, and Maliana. Those, yeah, those are the two that have been uh, assigned to you uh, currently. Um, you know that there are, are probably other colonies, but these are the two remaining that you have uh, been assigned. Right. Well, you know, atmospheric processors, uh, you know, that's my bread and butter. Uh, so I, I'm all for, I'm all for Dylan following myself, you know. So, but I'll go anywhere. So, you know, you want to go to that paradise place, you know, fine. You know. I concur with uh, Windows here. We, uh... We ought to go where the people are and find out what what happened to them and why they're not responding. It makes more sense than to head to some place, you know, to than to go off exploring for fun, you know, just for <laughs> where where, there, where we don't expect to see anyone. But we ought to figure out where everyone is, to take stock of what what's going on in this sector. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> I'd rather not see anybody, but I mean, you know, they got atmospheric processors that need to be looked into. So, I mean, I'm all for that. So, all right. Sure. Yeah. He just want to yeah. talk to the processors. I think that'll uh, be that's okay. That's about it. Yeah. You know, I know how to speak to them. All right. Unless Dr. Bircher has any uh, complaints, it sounds like you're headed to the Dylan colony. No, that's fine by me. Uh-huh. All right. Caves. Well, I don't love forget, caves. don't forget your, don't forget your working Joes, and uh, I look forward to reading your report when you return. Okay. Oh, well, all fine. right. So we, we get two uh, working Joes. Yes. So if you if you do not remember uh, working Joes from or, or haven't seen all of the movies, the working Joes are uh, you know you know synthetic. Uh, but they are not, they do not look human. They have like a very basic, like rubber mask for a face. Uh, you know, just enough to be able to barely creep you out, just enough to creep you out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's, uh, not, not quite, not quite uncanny valley, (laughs) but you know, their lips are able to move and, and, you know, they can make very basic. Uh, facial expressions. They, they tried that as a as a as a slogan during their first advertising campaign. Ordinary Joe's <laughs> just stupid enough to creep you out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why I didn't. But say that. <laughs> you know, I mean, they they basically you know can do menial tasks. They can you know take care of uh, basic maintenance and stuff while you're all in cryo sleep and. Uh, but more importantly, you know, there'll be a set of eyes that you can always have on certain locations. Yeah, uh, we all to, understand uh, that this is a spy and that, you know, <laughs> the whole purpose of it is to surveil us, right? What? Like... An alien? No. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. <laughs> all right. So let, let's take a look at the, um, the Spinward Colony map. Uh, okay. The uh, Dylan Colony is right here where I'm yeah. moving my cursor into a circle. So it is slightly further away than the Gorham Colony. If you remember, the Gorham Colony was about seven days travel. Uh, where I wish we could draw on this. Uh, we can, if you want. Well, I would um, like to have like a line from the Gorm colony back to the mother colony, and then okay. from mother colony to this new one too, just so we can keep track of our travels. Sure. Uh, how do I pick the color? What color do you want it to be? Ah, uh, yellow would be nice. Yellow chartreuse. Just use Google <laughs> Maps. Google Star Maps. Google Star Maps. Where did I click on? Is there a small digital icon? Draw a line. Fill in. Oh, I just put that. Gorum. Oh, draw freehand. Here we go. There you and... go. Okay. Oh, this is this is the one I'm calling. Oh, it's nice. white though. Well, that's okay. I, I just made it yellow. Okay, hold on. That's the mother colony there, where Dune is? This one, the circle. Yeah? Yes, okay. yes, the circle is the mother colony. Okay, and then we're going out to... Oh, this makes perfect sense, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This where picture doesn't is... end up being obscene. Something has gone wrong. <laughs> Connect the dots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Eliana? Let's see. That's Koi 1966. I believe that that is further away. I think so. Yeah. I don't see it on here. I don't see it either. The A3. Oh, it's six. Is it six? Six. No, that's 90. 1966. Huh. Huh. Uh, I guess we can 
Because it's not an established colony, I guess we can just make up where it is. Oh, oh yeah. because it's not established. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Screw them. They don't need... There's no one there. Hmm. I'm going to make it uh, really far away. Okay. <laughs> because otherwise it wouldn't make sense why they didn't colonize it. Yeah. Especially since it's uh, like Paradise World. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, just eyeballing that, I would say it's about maybe 33% further away. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say it'll be nine days of of travel. Uh, you, I'm going to say that you, there are still the six, no, seven of you on the ship. Oh, no, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Nine have, of you. Okay, let's review our... There's nine review of you here. on the ship. We have Judge, yes. the captain, pilot. Yes. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You're not with us? Uh, that's right. Daver is not with you. And so he normally is I'm going the... to move him down to NPC. He's normally the roughneck. All right. Uh, yes. But Kip is also a roughneck? Yes. He is. Yes. yes. Okay, so you so have, you to have be not the... been assigned a replacement. You have to be the daver, Windows. The what? The daver, the one who get who got infected and dis- incapacitated on the way over. That's I don't want to get. I don't want to get. I don't want to get infected and incapacitated. <laughs> well, you're the all right. Man, so man. there, <clears throat> there, oh, there is eight. So there is eight of you. Uh, it is nine days of travel. Uh, so you have been assigned 18 times 8. You have been given 144 days of food. 144 people days worth of food, right? Yes. Let's hope it's not in uh, fested this time. Um, maybe that's something we should do right away. Is check the food. We checked the check food last our... time, and there was nothing wrong with it. It developed it on the way. Oh, yeah. I don't know what happened. I feel like we did. Yeah. Ch- we checked the food like three times. Well, I'm just saying. I think we should be checking it. Uh, I mean, four times. Four times? Dr. Dr. Butcher, I mean, how often do you, you know, like, how long does it take you to check this stuff? Oh, well, um, not that long, not with the new equipment we have. Okay, well, I mean... And uh, with with the new equipment, you could train uh, the Working Joes to, on how to use the equipment. And they could perform regular tests for him. Oh yeah, and everyone is going to a VSE. You know what I mean? As far as like for the ship's crew to ascertain if if they happen to be infected, they'll know. You know what I mean? Immediately quarantine mm-hmm. themselves. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're going to do regular tests, not only of the food, but also of each individual person. Uh, what what like what frequency are you thinking? Can can we just like uh, rig it to the uh, waste system? <laughs> it might need uh, like a mask too, you know, like a like a COVID yeah. ship. You know, uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to say the waste evaluation. Yes, that would take that would take a good day or so to rig that up. Um. But it, it, it could feasibly we'll, to be done. You can build it while we're there. <laughs> yeah. Instead of, you know, it, instead of Kip bringing a newspaper in, he can, you know, just uh, work on that, right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> All right. So what we need to establish is who's staying awake during the travel, uh, if anybody, and what they're going to work on while you head to this 
Oh, okay. Great. All right. Uh, you know, I I like my me time. Okay, that's one of my things. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's my character's thing. And uh, if if everyone else is uh, uh, sawing logs, I get lots of me time. And I get to you know just kind of tinker around the ship. So I have no problem with staying up the nine days. Hey, nothing. That's easy. I'll do it. All right. Uh, I think Yoko wants to volunteer, but also like volunteered last time, so it is totally fine. Or I mean, not totally fine, but it reluctantly accepts uh, going into cryo for this trip. Okay. Virtual will be too excited to sleep, essentially. So um, he'll be up uh, prepping for what we expect to find there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to tweak and fine tune the instruments as well as like take all the document and the and whatever I had learned from from the short amount of time that I had with uh, on the Solovsky with that team, uh -huh. you know what I mean, and, and taking any prompts from them or whatever. What else, so, okay, all right. I have some information I can give you about um, the uh, uh, what the colony, what information you have about the colony, and what you might expect when you arrive. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. How, how to well, approach that, the quarantine thing? Okay. Uh, so uh, it sounds. Do you want any of your other crew members to be conscious during the nine days, or is it just going to be Bircher and Kip? Just the, the working Joes, and uh, yeah, the working Joes never go to sleep. So they're uh -huh. they're just synthetics just that are. Right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, but th they'll be helping okay. me or at least one of them. I I'll stay. Okay. I'll, I'll stay clear of windows because I'm particularly, you know, <laughs> fine and fascinating. He's more of a dullard. All right. I'm just sitting over there staring out the window. <laughs> hey. I'm okay. Having some so time. I. All right. So I know what Bircher is kind of concentrating on over the course of those nine days. Uh, Kip. Yeah. Uh, you said Kip was going to be like tinkering around the ship. Is he doing tinkering around the ship? Tinkering? And you know, yeah, yeah, reading. You know, okay. So there's there's no particular project you want to work on while. Uh, uh, while no, you're no, up. just general maintenance around the ship. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, Yo Yoko's, like... Yoko's uh, cozy, comfy sleeping, but made sure that. Um... Mr. Jonesy, I don't know what I mean, his name. Um, was, the cat? Yeah, the cat. yeah, the cat. The cat was rigged up properly to, to record. So. That's oh, it. with the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I forgot. So, like, that. Throw, it's going to be nine days of really boring footage, but. You know, <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're going to have to fast forward through a lot of it, I think. Oh, boy. It's going to be, you know, <laughs> licking its butt. No, okay. Yep, <laughs> yep, it's going to be butt, cat butt. Nine days of cat. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. so this is uh, basically the information that you're going to, you know, ha have established on the colony and what to expect. Uh, so the planet itself is hot and humid. The daily temperatures actually reach 48 degrees Celsius. Uh, it there is the entire basically the entire continent where the Dillon colony exists is dominated by mountains, ravines uh, and then there is very thick jungle and there is a known widespread uh, cavern system that goes like both through the mountains themselves which is usually where the entrances are uh, but it's also believed that they run under the parts of the jungle as well. Uh, it suffers from frequent lightning storms, uh, intense monsoons, and there are thick banks of fog that can form very quickly after or before a storm. The gravity is relatively Earth-like. The day is about 20 hours long uh, and there is also a risk of 
phosphine poisonings uh, on the jungle floor. Uh, there have been reports of colonists uh, passing out from uh, from both heat stroke and this poisoning. Uh, but the later on, after the colony has been established, it seems like most colonists acclimate to this uh, over some time. The colony itself uh, is about uh, 40,000 people, uh, which we, we had talked about earlier. Uh, this is another mining colony, uh, but it does require uh, an atmosphere processor uh, that uh, cleans the air that is fed through the colony itself. Uh, so if this colony, if this atmosphere processor is not fully functional, you may require uh, vac suits during your exploration. Right. Cool. And the last contact with them, uh, with the colony itself, uh, they were still doing fairly well with their uh, with their mining efforts. Uh, they have had some people, uh, some of the colonists left, and the size shrunk down to about twenty thousand, um, almost in half. And their output went down, but they were still they still managed to be uh, productive. And that was the last status that is in the mother colony records. Do all the colonies kind of like trade with each other? Like resources? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is basically their main way of surviving was trading whatever it is that they produce uh, for bare necessities uh, or, you know, for whatever it is that they needed to uh keep their colony running uh yeah. amongst other colonies so ore was uh was a common thing to be traded uh and there were some colonies that were specifically generated food or processed ore and that sort of thing cool okay okay <clears throat> well when we get there we just need to raise the planet uh Hong Kong. You're going to raise the planet when you get there? <laughs> R-A-Z-E, -E, yeah. You're uh, so strong. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, disturbing the force. Death, no, just, Death Star. Uh, <laughs> just, right. um, yeah, bring the, you know, contact the planet, basically. And maybe if we can uh, scan the planet. For lack of a better term. So, okay. uh, just so yeah, just we to can... understand real quick, the the colony on the planet is like a city on a planet. Yes. Yes. So, uh, you know, it it it, it should have been. It it basically looks, you know, it it, it looks similar to the mother colony. Uh, okay. It might be a little bit more spread out because you know it, it's doing all kinds of. Uh, functions. It's not just administrative like the, the mother colony is. Um, but yes, I mean, it, it basically looks like it looks like a city almost. Um, and it has, it is generally like because it's a mining colony, it's probably going to be on or close to a mountain uh, which it is getting its ore from. I'm asleep. I'm in cry asleep. All right. So, uh, Dell, if uh, Dr. Bircher doesn't have any more like specifics that he wants to look into, uh, we can fast forward to your arrival, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. So, out of the 44, 144 days, uh, two people were conscious. So, that is going to be uh, six 
or no, 18 days worth of food that was used. All right. All right. So you arrive at this colony. Uh, it is. Uh, has uh, two stars in the solar system, uh, a blue giant and a red dwarf. So um, those two things are orbiting each other and each of the individual planets are orbiting those two suns. Uh, there are three other planets in addition to the planet that the Dillon colony exists on. Uh, as you get closer to uh, orbit over this planet, you can see that there is a large, or there is five main um, continents on this planet. The colony is on one of the two uh, continents that is on the equator um, and there is a chain of volcanic islands that could potentially uh, contain resources themselves. Did you say the average temperature was like in the 40s, like Celsius? Yes. Okay. Average or max? <laughs> that is that is the average high of the day oh, on, in the equator. Yeah, it's, it's balmy in there to get the, the, <laughs> to the equator. I was thinking they'd get on top of a mountain or something, get cooler. You know, but... All right. So th this is, uh, you know, <laughs> this is basically, you know, th those highs that you you know that we that we've heard horror stories about in uh, <laughs> like in texas and pakistan and stuff like that where it's barely habitable by humans um right but uh it sounds like i mean from the records you know the uh the atmosphere the atmosphere processor must help with that a little bit um and there is you know some adaption that the colonists make to this so there is there is this threat of heat stroke but if you want to keep your back suits on you can uh you know they have uh they, they kind of they have built in air conditioning essentially uh you know they heat you when you're in space and they can cool you when you're in really high temperatures like this right so uh that's up to you okay all right so uh as it sounds like you guys you know that bircher wanted to scan the uh you know scan the area uh around this colony when you arrived in orbit uh it sounds like it's so the initial scans you can tell that the atmosphere processors are still operating because okay. the the phosphine levels are fairly low uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, and there is approximately, um, oh wait, hold on one second. It seems like the colony itself is still functioning, but there is no reply to commun with communications. Similar the to the Gorin colony. The satellites in orbit still seemingly active? Uh, there is no response from any of the satellites. In fact, two of them seem to have been damaged. Uh, you know, from your, you know, from your position, you can uh, physically see that, you know, they, they've been partially broken apart, whether they collided with something where they were attacked, they're not entirely sure. Okay. Um, no black boxes attached that we can notice or no uh, you, You'd have fighters. to physically, 
<laughs> yeah, gotcha. Uh, you don't pick up any other ships in the area, uh, although keep in mind that those ships seem to have some sort of stealth tech. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you're not picking up any other ships. Uh, and there is, uh, I mean, like I said about the the black boxes, you'd have to physically go to the satellites to see if they have black boxes on them. You can't detect them from remotely. All right, guys, what do you think we should do? I, I'm going to start waking up the main crew. Okay. Head of the cryopods. Uh, and, of course, Yoko is a kindred spirit, so uh, I'll just explode with all this information. Up. Okay, so wait, I wait, am, wait, 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 wait. I am just, so, like, hurling everywhere, and, you know, maybe you explode, I'm, understand, maybe I'm hearing the things you're saying. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so we've, so how many of us were awake? There was me and Bircher and the two working That's ghosts. That's oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. So we yep. used 18 days worth of food. Yes. Sure. Okay. All right. Keep track of that. Okay. I feel terrible. Come on. <laughs> right. Per- perfect. Just to give us a moment while you know, come to my, uh, my little, Laboratory, or you know, and, I, and I'll give you give you some medicine and, and oh. check your vitals and whatnot. Oh. And while I'm telling you about all the information about the satellites and no contact and everything else, but but the uh, systems do seem to be working on the planet. Did you uh, did you make contact with any any people? No, no. I've had no one return contact. I can't raise anyone. Um, But the systems are working. Good. Uh, I I was going to also say that you do find extensive uh, life readings down there. Uh, You know, and generally a life reading indicates like, you know, a human. Um, Yeah, I mean, according to the limits of what we thought the population should be, around 20... 20 uh, it's it's not quite that accurate, but it is significantly um it, it it is less than you would expect, and it is not concentrated inside of the colony itself, but uh also but mostly around the perimeter, uh which seems unusual. Uh, well, maybe say that know, again. So- say that again. Sorry, what's around the perimeter? So the colony, uh, let, let, let me show you a map of the colony, you know, okay. I'll kind of explain it to you. Hold on one second. Uh, I got to pull this up. I, I didn't have all of this prepared because I just, you guys just decided. We, we, we got yeah, that's fine. We, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. so, oh, wait, I'm looking for scenes. Well, if, uh, if the colony is, uh, if they're not responding, maybe, maybe their comms equipment is down. Two two yes, stars here. Like two stars here. It seems re- you know maybe something. Maybe there was some kind of solar storm or something. All right. Please tell me you don't you don't just see gray here, right? Oh wait, I've turned the vision on. Hold on one second. Black. Hold on. Black. black is good, better than gray. Yeah, we got it. There we go. There we go. See it. Okay. That's All right. So, crash ship. Crash ship. So this is. Um, this is the, the Dylan colony here. Uh-huh. Uh, so, as I mentioned, you up in the atmosphere processor, which is in the top right, right, that is obviously running. It's generating a high output, and the atmosphere readings are indicating to you that it is running. Uh, so, as you can see, this, this is a pretty extensive compound. So, you would expect to see these life readings, like, you know, scattered throughout this area, right. particularly where the lines are. However, most of the life readings are both on the ed- very perimeter of the colony and spread out towards the jungle. And pushed out something. 
or some hazard. So we should land right in dead center of the colony, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should land. I don't know. I mean, maybe we should uh, seek are out they, these folks maybe... and wonder why they've abandoned the, the the bulk of the colony. We might have radiation. We might have uh, sickness. We might have, I don't know. Yes, you know, indeed. Radiation is a good theory. Uh, Kip, I think uh, if like the same we found with there, maybe there's been some kind of an outbreak and uh, yeah, I didn't want to say it, but uh, yeah, you know, had had to escape where the uh, contagion is. So uh, we think if we can find a suitable place to land, uh, is there is no there any um, is there any indicator of like density of population? Meaning like oh maybe there's like more people. By the mining facility, or you know, um, no, it it seems uh, it it seems relatively uh, dispersed. Uh, it's there's not like any heavy concentrations uh, anywhere. Cool. Uh, but the, I mean, that it doesn't seem like there should be uh, buildings where like there's there shouldn't be any shelter there. Uh, right. where where a lot of these are, it should be right on the brink of the jungle, and this is and just to, to clarify, this is on this is like on a big plateau. Uh, okay, so this this this, this line that we see is like a is like probably an elevation the top so the, of the plateau. No, the uh, no no that's the, that's the edge of the jungle. Oh. but I mean this is this is a, a like a very rocky terrain, and the mountain is to the north of where this picture is. So okay. It, this this isn't uh, you know, okay. This isn't perfectly okay. flat ground or okay. anything. But this is the jungle right. ground. This is the jungle line, then, and then yes, that's uh, correct. And then there's well, mountains. We can't land, land directly in the jungle, so we have to land near it. Get further away yeah. from the colony, yeah. maybe here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I still feel awful. Please, your medication's not working well enough, Doctor Bircher. Just uh, give it 24 hours or 48. If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're so inclined, it'll progressively get better. Unless it doesn't. <laughs> and then come back and see me next week. <laughs> uh, I'll get you on the next trip. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not making yeah. any decisions right now. So, anyone else? Uh, as far as where to land, yeah, past oh. the E, I would say on jungle. I mean, you could you could fly around before you make a decision Here? and get you know get yeah. more information. <laughs> you don't have to decide right now. Uh, just so we can do a, we can do a little eggs. more fly buying. You mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah buzz the, buzz the colony. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ta you know. Tap into. Uh, can we tap into a satellite and see if I can uh, get uh, the satellite? No, the, the satellites seem to be down. Uh, none of them are responding, and, and I had mentioned earlier that uh, two of them seem to be destroyed or, or damaged. Yeah, it looks like they've been attacked the same way that they cut off the uh, cut off the colonists. You know, but uh, you know, and I fear that they've these pirates are here. Yeah, I would like to look at the crash ship. Maybe buzz that. And see if it is similar to the one we had, the other colony. You know? yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I like that idea. All right. Those, that. If, if they're cutting off uh, these colonists and then probably infecting them with these worms or whatever, mm -hmm. we might already be too late and just have to pick up the scavengers on the outside. They're okay. still alive. That's what I think. Know. Going, something like that's going on here. That's what I think. And then drop a nuke in the on that colony <laughs> to cleanse it. To cleanse it. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure. That's the only way to be sure. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's go. Yeah, let's do a couple of flybys and see if we can make out. Anything. All right. So who you is going the... down onto the colony? Oh, I'll come wait. down. Oh, 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 you mean in the dropship? Oh, okay. Yeah, in the dropship. Sorry. Uh, That's okay. What I meant. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll go. 
We're all going. Atmosphere. That atmospheric processor is not going to, you know, take care. Because none of our crew are infected with a horrible disease. Something like that, yeah. All right, yeah, do you want to bring it? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Yep, you can tell it is. It is still running from up here. You so tell. you can go back in the cryo kip if you want to. Well, wait a minute. Wait, yeah. Hold on. I, I can tell it's running. Yeah, but I mean, what from here I can tell that th this is a come all this way to determine the status of the atmospheric processor, and I can tell from here why because it's got like a green, blinking green light. Is that uh, it? It just it, it, we can it, drop you just off. your 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 scans of it can tell there there's a he there's a huge power out output or you know it it is running just you know. The level at which it's running, you don't know, but there is, it is taking a lot of power from something. It's taking a lot of power from something. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. I'd still like to get a closer look because, you know, that's that's what I'm here for. Right? Uh, Emily wants yeah, to go. Yeah, we can drop you off there. Emily, Emily wants to go <laughs> on the away mission. <laughs> I'm deciding that for her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Do you do you want anybody else to go? Yoko, I think we should. Is it a, your marine, maybe. Uh, Here, so Emily. Do we want to bring uh, uh, Miss Sophia? <laughs> Taking a working Joe. I think. Uh, uh, and yeah. a red shirt. Oh my right? god! Don't we have a counselor? Who's the counselor? Um, uh, uh, that is Lakota. Lakota. Yeah. We need to be Hamada's security, so. Uh, yeah. In case, in case there's anybody that needs to be secured if they've been infected by these, uh, whatever. Yeah, we don't need Lakota. Yoko's the face. You sure <laughs> certainly don't need Tan. He's just going to, you know, just be an about Mr. Anna with Yeah. Yeah. This this is all out of code. <laughs> Your um, blinking green light isn't flashing. No, no. I imagine so. <laughs> this is so the we, wrong shade of green. <laughs> um, beep beep, flash flash flash. So, I think we take Dodge right because he's the he pilots the uh, alert, oh, yeah. the shuttle. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless, we're gonna do a fly Unless you're gonna. Yeah, I, I I I just assumed you were bringing Dutch. So, okay, so we I take mean, Dutch, I'm sure somebody take... else can. Emily wants to go. Whether or not we let her go, I don't know. Um, Yoko is happy to have her. Uh, again, I'm of the opinion of keeping her close. Okay. Yep. So you are bringing. Oh, I... okay. Oh, so geez. it's so it's Emily. That's not a good idea. It's Yoko. It's Doctor Bircher. And Dodge is the pilot, shuttle pilot. Yeah. Emily's going to bring back a pet yeah. if you if you take her with us. She's <laughs> she's she's just interested in prospecting. She's the most okay. okay. So so, so Yoko yeah. will tell. So, so Yoko is talking directly to Doctor Bircher and and says, yeah. uh, Emily is the most qualified of us all to assess the the state of the." Colony down there. Yes, you're right. You're right, Yoko. As usual, I've just uh, letting my cautious nature get the best of me. Well, I'm glad you but can. Perhaps a little. I'm glad you can see things the right way, even even if it takes you a minute. <laughs> it does. I'm not so uh, sharp. Sharp, just not as sharp. Understand. All right. I think that's our team. So, all right. So, the six of you? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, start. Dudge uh, loads you up into the dropship. Are you taking any... Uh, Hamada is going to take a pulse rifle. Are you bringing any weapons in addition to that? I'm just bringing my equipment. Uh, checked. Uh, oh. Your standard... And yeah, and my medical equipment or whatever, my MRI okay. and stuff. Oh, I'm taking the uh, Armat M41A pulse rifle, of course. Yeah. Okay. Never leave home. Never leave home. Are, are you? <laughs> do you already have that equipped, uh, or do we need to add that to your character? I 
I see it here. Oh, wait, nope. It has yes. to be made active. Oh, yeah. We never figured out how to do that. Uh, <laughs> all right. But as long as, as long as you have it in your character sheet, that's fine. Yes, sir. Um, all right. Uh, is Yoko bringing anything? Any weapons, equipment, that sort of thing? Um, so, as a biologist, um, I don't know, it's kind of like life scanner thing. <laughs> okay. Um, tricorder? Yeah, like a tricorder, but just, I'm, I'm most like the a device that mostly scans for like plants and life of that type. Flora and fauna, huh? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't I think I have will... a weapon. Go ahead. I don't think I have a okay. weapon unless it's like a standard per self defense thing. Maybe a knife or a. Pistol. Your weapon is your mind. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. In the alien universe, do, does everyone carry a gun with them? Like, is that this a thing? No. That everyone. No. Does? No. no. I, Only I if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. why so many people die in the alien movies it's not all <laughs> oh, that's okay yeah i'm happy with just my scanner okay and and and, uh, and obviously will... um like vials and stuff to collect samples right like that's the thing yeah oh yeah yeah you go death wish nirvana yeah <laughs> okay so uh the six of you load up into the drop ship and Dudge takes you down through into the atmosphere heading towards this colony. As you are as you get closer to the uh the colony at about maybe you know two thousand feet or so, you can tell that this colony is not functioning anymore. <laughs> there is I mean it's basically just desolate inside. Uh, plants have started to grow grow into the colony. Uh, you see no movement down there. Uh, but there is some sort of uh, solar array that is processing the, uh, or that is most likely generating the atmosphere or the electricity for the atmosphere processor. Uh, that is in this area right here. Uh, uh, that is the only area that looks like it's been maintained in any way. The processor. Uh, the processor. Uh, yeah, it's directly west of the processor. There's, there's. This is like the power line that uh, feeds the oh, processor. Okay. Or, right. Um, so that you can see a, a, a field of uh, solar arrays there that are probably generating the processor, but that the electricity for the processor. But that is the only um, area that seems to be at least partially maintained uh, in any way. The rest mm -hmm. of the colony looks ruined. You can see that they're all around the perimeter here. And even partially into the jungle, it, you see uh, a, a scattering of tents and fires burning. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go to the processor, right? I mean, that's the lifeblood. This whole, nobody survives if the processor is not working. So. It looks like it's working. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, the crashed ship, you want to buzz by it first? To make sure that there's no hostiles, yeah, that we can ascertain before we get a processor. The crashed ship. Yeah, I think we should see. If I think their priority is contacting whoever's uh, whoever is in charge here. Any kind yeah, of yeah. I don't mean leadership. stopping there, but just buzzing by. Yeah, you just know, buzzing by. by. I agree. I agree with the doctor. Dutch yeah. swings the ship by the crashed ship. The ship. All right. So, uh, as you get closer to the ship, you can see that it looks like it crashed into the side of uh, an out, a rocky outcropping mm -hmm. and, uh, is, and then fell down into a large 
uh, pool of mud. Uh, it looks like this uh, might be accumulation from the monsoons, uh, but it is partially submerged. Uh, but Doug tells you that it is most likely a uh, hel uh, Heliod Hel Heliades class vessel, uh, which is a cargo ship. And it is most likely one of the ships that was used to transport uh, goods to or from this colony. Does it look um, like long destroyed or is it like smoldering or is it, um, you know, that kind of question? Uh, you mean like how... Like yeah, like is this, this, was it crashed asking? recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or has oh, it no, been no. here for it, like it, it, it looks like it's been here for a while. <laughs> okay, okay, wow. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know the you don't know. Um, it, most likely, it's un it's uninhabited because it's probably mostly filled with water from. Uh, that's accumulated, but it, you yeah, can it's tell like sunk in the mud. Or it's whatever. sunk, yeah, it's sunk in the mud, and water has crept into it. Okay, well, that doesn't interest Yoko. Huh. All right. Uh, yeah. So why don't we right. just continue on to the the uh, that the processor. I mean, the question is where okay. do we want to land, right? Yeah, nice, nice open spot, right? I mean, as there, I see the processor and I see like settlers along the jungle line, right? Those are the two main possible. Or do we want to go check? Well, we don't know what kind of state they're in, but do we? They've, they've probably seen and heard our dropship. Uh. Yes, uh, you are flying low enough uh, mm -hmm. that they would at least, I mean, they don't know who it is or, right. or like couldn't, couldn't identify it, but they would certainly see the ship flying by. Maybe, uh, we, should, uh, maybe we should go to like uh, one of these perimeter camps that's a little smaller. Uh, that way, just, we to get a, be... just to get a handle on the popular locals, yeah, and, and so that we're not dealing with so many people that we get swarmed. Well, I mean, if everyone's on the outskirts like this and in the jungle, then I feel like that would be an explanation as to why they don't have communications with space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so I, I, you know, I I agree that that contacting people makes sense, and and we can. The... So yeah, so why don't we just find like a small camp, like a small grouping of people? Because they can give us a heads up, maybe, what's actually, what the situation yeah, is. Yeah, right? just to find out what, yeah, exactly. We can talk to them first before talking yeah, yeah. to a bigger group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're, we're just ready to, to see their, their stats. Oh, wow. So where, where are you thinking? Um, so we're heading, like, from the crash ship toward the mining facility, uh, we'll just stop, like, if we can, if there's a reasonable landing spot, we'd like to land where we could come into close contact with a local group of people based okay. on, like, maybe tents or whatever we can see. All right. So, uh, y yeah, you, as you are you know, coming in close and trying, and Dudge is trying to find a, a specific spot to land. Uh, you can see that there are several people uh, that emerge from their tents and point up and, and start screaming something as you're landing down. Uh, they look fairly primitive, almost. Uh, you know, you, they are certainly not well kept. Uh, their tents are made out of some sort of uh, mishmash of like leather and uh, you know old fabrics that 
you know, they probably had inside of the colony. Uh, and, you know, most of them look fairly dirty and unkept and wearing tattered clothes. Um, Dudge, uh, you know, puts a little bit of distance between the dropship and, and, you know, the this scattering of tents in case, you know, you guys need to make a break for it or something. You have some, some breathing room there. Uh, but as you peek out of the uh, the port window of the dropship, you can see a small group of them is cautiously making their way towards you. I imagine okay, a group of us is uh, disembarking from the plane, approaching as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Some approach and maybe put out something that some sign that we are. Well, obviously they see the ship, but some that we come in peace. You know what I mean? Uh, some kind of. That would be a, that would be smart if we had a gift. Uh, I... Maybe we could just flash a light, like uh, in Morse code or so. How about a potato? Okay. <laughs> a potato. 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 <laughs> yeah, all for a potato. A symbol, a All perfect right. symbol of peace and Indeed. prosperity. So you, you you come out, uh, you know, with your, you know, in in a sign of peace, and are It sounds like you're offering them some some food. Is that right? A plant. Yeah, I have I have my garden. I'll take a plant from my or my like grow room or whatever. Um, just okay. some plant, just a little plant to show like, hey, life and good knit, good things. Okay. It's like a little, little uh, plant. All right. So as you uh, are walking, you know, forward, you can see that uh, one of them is. Like they're they've gone like wide eyed at the at the plant that Yoko is uh, is is holding out, and they try to you know walk more quickly than everyone else who's being very cautious, and one of the one of the uh, what appears to be some sort of guard or something who who has some makeshift spear uh, in his hand uh, puts puts. You know, grabs the shoulder of of this this young boy who is, is going to rush forward and uh, holds them back to to you know you know to in in what appears to be an effort to protect them. And this man with the spear steps you know kind of steps forward from the rest of the group and says, "We have nothing for you here. We've they've already taken everything of value." Who? Say. The Who's pirates. The pirates. The Gorham pirates. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Uh, They've picked us clean already. Please leave us in peace. Uh, we have. I turned to Yoko, like, are you going to talk to these people? I, uh, this is <laughs> uh, We're here to bring you aid. I kind of stumble forward. Uh, I kind of glance at Yoko, seeing if, you know, I have the lead to do that. And uh, I'll, I'll start pulling out my uh, medical supplies and start walking down the, the gangplank, you know, closer to them. You poor what? people. What is this? What is this? Like, they, he seems uh, somewhat taken aback by you know this <laughs> this device uh, that you've taken out uh, of your pack. He says, "What is this you have?" I stay back, everyone. What, what sort of aid are you offering? Um, supplies, food, uh, medication, healing for your you and your young. 
uh, your peoples. Uh, these pirates that you speak of, we've uh, ran into trouble with them before. Uh, we've come from another colony where it seems that they have have struck that colony. We was able to take its people, its survivors, back to the mother colony. And, and as you say the mother yeah. colony, you hear gasps run across everyone uh, <laughs> everyone standing behind him. You, you're with the mother? Yes. Yes, we come <laughs> here to uh, yeah, to give to give A. Please we, let us help. And you know, I, I, I'm straight. I haven't stopped walking toward them. Yeah. We have no qualms with Mother Michaela. I, I kind of pause for a second and then kind of just think that he must be referencing to a previous, uh, uh, you know, previous authority figure. And then I keep walking. Well, th that is good. That is good. Let us, uh, let us tend to you. Any wounded? And you, yeah. you hear, or you see a uh, an older woman uh, whisper into this uh, guard's ear, and uh, you see a look of conf like uh, concern come over his face. And we we do have we do have an injured man. Do you think you could help him? He. Uh, he fell from a tree and w was impaled in, in a branch. Mm. Ouch. Uh, yes, yes. Bring him, uh, bring him to me. I, I don't think it'll be safe to move him. Would you be willing to come with us? He's not far. Yes, take me to him now. And you look, and you see a relief, uh, a look of relief come over the woman's face who, who whispered into his ear, and she gestures for you to follow her. Okay. Were you going to say something else? No, no, that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll follow her. I'm caught oh, up right. in, in well, their, their uh, you know, I'm here to save these people. They, uh, so the rest of them, uh, are still very cautious of all of you. Uh, and they are straggling far off to the side rather than, uh, you know, walking along with you. Right. Um, and, but uh, they're, the, this guard that you were speaking with and uh, two other guards are kind of uh, walking behind you and to the to the left and right of you, both to protect the people straggling off to the side and, uh, you know, watching your back, I guess, and uh, yeah. making sure you're not up to any good or no good. Um, so are all of you going to follow to the camp? Uh, yeah, or... I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Do you want Dudge to stay with the dropship or are you, you want him to come? Dutch no, with I the think he should. Unless... Don't you think he should stay with the dropship? Yeah. Dutch stays with the ship unless he says otherwise, and then we can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can keep contact with him. Uh, Yoko's not really All particularly right. needing to go heal anyone, so Yoko's more just in like PR, just like generally befriending I'm, I'm them. Okay. Like, like the crowd. Like you said, the crowd's off to the side. Like. Yoko is looking mm -hmm. for anyone who seems to take an interest or be particularly intrigued by the potato plant that I have here. Uh, yeah, you can see that there is a that you know that young boy that was, you know, rushing ahead to see to see this plant that you're holding forward. Uh, he is like watching you and the plant. Uh, as you're all walking, but I mean, he he's probably about twenty feet away. Is, uh, is is there a custodian of the young one that I can see? Because I would I would go to them and say, hey, um, like, and I would explain the plant to them and try to say I made this really hardy variety of potato that should be able to survive <laughs> even in the hot temperatures like this. 
And they, so they kind of, as you're explaining this to them, you, you, you can tell that they are, they're not quite following what you're saying. <laughs> uh, but uh, they okay, are, tell- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are, uh, you know, fascinated by the fa- like who you are, how you're dressed, what you're saying, the fact that you have this plant that isn't in the ground that you're carrying around with you. Uh, and eventually, you know, when you get done explaining, uh, the boy kind of pulls away from uh, this woman who is, uh, you know, trying to protect him a bit uh, and comes up to you and says, we can eat this? Uh, it needs to be cooked first. <laughs> Let me show you. I'm, I'm just going to spend well, time can, with locals. We can cook it at the camp. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're going to, to teach them about, you know, the plant and uh, while uh, Bircher is, is, is dealing with his wounded man. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll do uh, we'll do a uh, a roll, um, and see if you can change the disposition of this group to uh, to friendly towards you. Uh, all right, so uh, Bercher follows uh, this woman who's either like friend or son or husband is is apparently injured uh, into this makeshift tent. Um, the Bercher can immediately tell that the leather that was used to create this was fairly new in comparison to, you know, the age of the colony. So this is, the colony has certainly fallen since this uh, leather was created. So Mm -hmm. they obviously have, there's either some animal or something that they've either hunted or are raising somewhere that they use to make this leather. Um, and uh, inside is a relative, is a very primitive uh, living environment. Uh, it's like a hobbled together thing, a uh, set of, you know, salvage from the colony uh, versus things made out of stone and and you know and wood, so okay. it's it's very uh, you know the the bed is uh, some old cot that was probably in uh, in the colony somewhere, but with like blankets and uh, like support from large wooden branches. There's uh, a, you know, an old uh, piece of mach- like mach- heavy drilling machinery that's been uh, turned into a uh, a large cooking pot for making stews and that sort of thing. It's it's really uh, it's all over the place. Uh, but in the corner, you can see on another bed is a man who has a large uh, gaping wound in his abdomen. It looks like they put some sort of, uh, you know, paste or something around it to try to stop the bleeding. Uh, But you can see that it is severely infected and it's starting to go gangrene. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I immediately set to him and... um you know, get rid of the paste, use foam to to seal the wound uh, Mm -hmm. after I clean it and uh, give him something for his pain, medicine, you know, while I'm doing it. Um, Yeah, just making sure uh, and and checking for any kind of infections. Uh, All right. Like you said, gangrene, I know that, but giving him some kind of something to offset. Yeah. All right, so why don't you give me a medical aid roll? Okay. Um, 
one success uh, is going to stabilize him, but it's not going to guarantee his survival. Two successes will guarantee his survival. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You should all be dropping your stress to zero. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't tell you guys that. Sorry. Uh, so uh, you can... Uh, Del, why don't you just drop your stress to zero and re-roll. How about panic? Uh, How about panic level? Uh, panic level as well, yes. All right, you got your two successes. Sweet. Um, so, yeah, you... you start you know utilizing all this equipment that you gave them or that you brought with you uh you know you uh you you get the bleeding to stop pretty quickly uh and are able to uh eliminate the gangrene over several applications of uh Sick. antibiotics and and uh you know your your uh first aid devices uh, has yeah. managed to eliminate the infection. And you can see, uh, especially once the pain medication kicks in, that uh, he is doing significantly better. And they are incredibly grateful um, that you managed to save his life. And the, one, the woman who, uh, you know, guided you here turns to Bircher and says, I thank the mother for, for for saving my boy. I I thought I was going to lose him. I, he's all I have left. Mm. Yeah, I turn around and look at the boy. I guess he's probably passed out. What what's his name? I didn't catch it. Even though I was uh, talking to him, his you know, while. Uh, his name is is Kyle, a son of Henry. Kyle, he he came close to the edge, but uh, I believe I've arrested that fall. And as long as he gets rest and uh, nutrition, nourishment, he should make a full recovery, I suspect. Then I give her a smile and hold her hand a little bit, clasp on it, and you know, to reassure. And uh, and you know. The, the others is is there anyone else I can help anyone suffering uh, n not here but uh, I, I I'm I'm sure that that Vidon would would know of anyone that uh, could use your help what the, the these technologies that that the mother gave you that they're it, it's virtually magic compared to what we have available to us. Everything we get comes from the jungle. I can, I can see you've been cut off from uh, from the things that you you did you do need to maintain your uh, this community here. But uh, you've sufficed, and you've shown great resourcefulness with. Uh, with what you've been able to gather and, and keep yourself alive, but Vidon, where where is he? Uh, I must uh, need to talk with him. Uh, he's uh, at the camp south of here. Uh, it's it's deep in the jungle, uh, where the majority of us live. Perhaps a guide, and I'll lift my eyebrow. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we can certainly arrange for it. Yes, I, I will tell the others. I turn on my heel and kind of smile to her. And I, I walk over looking for Yoko to excitedly tell him of this new development. All right. So you find Yoko. It has a small group of uh, villagers around him as he's explaining the fascinating nature of uh, plant him. genetics and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know how they can grow this plant and eat it. Uh, yeah. And, yes. Uh, so 
Dune, why don't uh, we have? Oh, hold on one second. I, I want to find. We want to find out what uh, what Kip is, or, or I'm sorry, what uh, Yoko is capable of uh, getting out of the uh, the villagers before you arrive. Uh, so, Dune, can you do a manipulation roll for me, please? Okay. Mm. Okay, manipulation. All right, you got one success. Do you want to push? <laughs> uh, I don't want to be stressed out by these people. Okay, all right. So uh, they are very interested uh, in learning more about this. Uh, I mean, essentially what is it? <laughs> you're introducing is agriculture to these uh yeah. to these people uh and uh they you hear uh but they ask you several questions about uh if you know if uh mother michaela has you know given you all of these fascinating plants are you going to engage with them as to what mother or who mother michaela is Um, yeah, so I think I would explain, um, I wouldn't be, like, dismissive of, of the idea. I would, um, yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would interact with them and, and, uh, and, and level with them. Uh, I, I, meaning if 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 one of them said you know mentioned mother michaela or or some kind of comment i would um mm -hmm. i think i would ask like oh is 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 mother you know like uh who i would say who is mother michaela it's what i would ask first when i when someone brings it up are are you not well okay well i guess we won't role play through it so uh they are so they say that uh mother michaela uh is the they first of all they're shocked that you don't know who mother michaela yeah. is <laughs> uh, <laughs> second of all uh they explain that mother michaela is uh the uniter of the I'm sorry, one second. Let me. I was looking at something else and now. The. Yeah, the uniter of the two divines. Uh, that's how they. Uh, that's how they uh, explain it to you. And that uh, she has united some of the wayward colonies. Um, I would say, oh no, I'm, I, you know, I'm not familiar with Mother Michaela. She hasn't given me any of the things that I have or that I'm showing you. Um, uh, Is there so, another mother other than Michaela? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. All I know is that uh, I created this plant by breeding two other plants to make it. And you see some confusion amongst them, uh, <laughs> but some of them are 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 feels like somewhat empowered by you know what you've explained to them. All right, so uh, Bercher shows up and sees this small group huddled around uh, Yoko. Um, uh, what do you got? What do you want to do? Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, Yoko, and then uh, I hate to interrupt, but um, I, I spoke with a woman, and she gave me some uh, information as to who is commanding these uh, these colonists. Oh, good. Uh, you, um, you you found out who's in charge? Yeah, I, I can't recall the name. It starts with a V. Uh, but she's Vadon. Vadon. Yes, yes, that is it. Vadon. She's going to get us a uh, 
a guide. She sent us somewhat deep into the into the forest, the place she references the camp. So, um, she, she's the I one said, in charge here. So you see him. Uh, I, I kind of look at Kip and you know, like he's interrupting right now. And <laughs> yes, yes, Kip. She's the one. In, yeah, she's telling me the one in charge, and she's going to get a guide to take us there. Um, and and perhaps we can find out exactly what we need to know about this area, and maybe coordinate with uh, uh, off lifting the people here. I wonder. I mean, are all the survivors in this uh, in this in this state? I don't, and how many are there? I guess that's what we need to figure out. Yes, but I, I suspect that uh, that their leader would would have all that pertinent information as well as why the colony now lays in ruin. And uh, you know, perhaps what further steps we need to take from here. But these people are somewhat simple. Uh, I don't think they, they have the answers that, that we require. Well, we need to talk to the leader. Oh, yeah. Yes, you go. That's a fine idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll follow your lead on that. Get up. So, uh, the guard that approached you initially uh, comes, uh, you know, joins the three of you, uh, and, or actually, I guess, five of you, uh, and he says, I'm willing to take you to see Vidan in his camp, uh, but we must make a decision. Do we travel at night when it is cool uh, and risk encountering the ferals, or do we travel during the day and fight the heat? Uh, what are the ferals? They are... They are the lowest of us. They have resorted to eating eating the flesh of man to survive. Uh, okay, and then what was the other thing you said? Uh, dealing with the heat itself. Oh, uh, the traveling heat. Through the, oh. Yes, traveling through the jungle can be quite hard on the body, and... I suspect that you are not quite as adapted to it as we are. Well, we we could probably do fine. That's why we have these still suits. Mm -hmm. um, suits. <laughs> so, yes, I I kind of blanch at it when he when he says the feral. You know what I mean? And, and, and shiver a little bit. Uh, Poor people. I send them my breath as uh, he mentions that they've they've devolved into cannibalism. You know, what I mean, to keep themselves alive. Yeah. Uh, I almost want to reach out to help them, but then again, I don't want to, them to bite the hand that feeds them. Hey, give me a reason. Hey. To it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give them reason to. Yeah. So, but um, perhaps if um, we can weather that weather the heat if if you can um but again we have enough armaments here to to keep us safe from any uh feral attack if we travel by night what do you suggest my suggestion would be we if you feel that you can handle the heat that would be safest for all of us let us Cook you a uh, okay. what we would yes what <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> let's have you for dinner. <laughs> uh, let let us let us have a feast for you and uh, to celebrate your the the healing of Kyle and we can move we can head out. In the morning, it's we would be there before, uh, b 
before dusk if we leave first thing. Yeah, that is agreeable. Yeah. All right. Him? We're going to go see him. Now. Go see him. It's a him, right? All right. Huh? Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. So, All right. So yeah. we will uh, pick up with that travel uh, mm-hmm. through the jungle um, mm-hmm. south to the camp. Run through the and, jungle. Yep. Yep. In the daytime? And, uh, in the daytime. Yeah. That's what oh you guys. Oh, my goodness. Berger didn't seem too concerned one way or the other. So it's going to be hot. They say that this is the safest. Yeah. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> All right. It's going to be, uh, it's probably going to be slow going too because, I mean, you know, it's the jungle. So it's the jungle. we should probably just fly there, you know, and drop down to the clearing. Um, Skydive? Yeah, or either just lower or repel down. Uh, 